prospects, even at their best, and these guys are among the best prospects in the world and in this division, are for me, are the cream of the crop. There's things always to work on, but uh, last night, Lopez showed why he's among those, that level of prospects. Welcome, fight fans, to Boxing Scene's Top Stories, only on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. I am George D. Mattel. It's a quick reminder to download the Pro Box TV app where apps are available to get the full Pro Box TV experience, which includes the great insights of our world champions. We have Chris Algieri and Pauli Malinaji joining us here on Top Stories. Well, last Wednesday night, or last night's Wednesday night fights was headlined by Mexican lightweight Omar Salcedo upsetting Chris Colbert. Colbert's corner threw in the towel in the ninth round, and now Colbert has now lost three of his last four fights, including suffering back-to-back -back stoppages. Also, the Mongolian Senbatar Erdenebat continued his climb up the ranks at super featherweight with his 11th professional victory, taking down Franz Franci Fortunato, the Dominican, losing his second professional fight with Erdenebat controlling the fight with his high work rate and work on the body as well. Impressive victory for Adenabad. And also the Puerto Rican lightweight, or light heavyweight, excuse me, Najee Lopez, dismantling Ismael Ocles inside of three rounds, also using body work and right hands to make the difference, getting the stoppage after 38 seconds left, or 38 seconds in the third round. Najee Lopez remains undefeated. He improves to 12 0 with nine wins by way of knockout. All right, Chris, let's talk about this main event here between Salcido and Colbert. What did you make of the fight? And what's next for Colbert, who is on a poor run of, of results here? Yeah, so, um, you know, this is a great card top to bottom, uh, first and foremost. But, you know, the main event, this was a, a fight that I was excited about because it really represented what Pro Box TV is all about. You have two fighters who are coming off hard losses, uh, one of which was Salcido, who actually lost his first, first professional defeat was on our air. Uh, took his first loss, uh, underperformed, and uh, you know, lost to an undefeated fighter, but has been, came back, you know, and came back to fight a fighter in Chris Colbert, who's been right there. The guy has only lost to fighters who went on to win world titles. Um, he doesn't have that many fights, but he's had high-level competition. He's been 10, he's been 12 rounds. Uh, so the experience was definitely in Colbert's, Colbert's uh, a corner last night. But man, Salcido looked like he really learned from his first experience on Pro Box TV. He came in incredibly conditioned, had a great game plan, and Colbert just couldn't get off with that classic Colbert style where he fought slick, moving from the outside, lateral movement, using the jab, firing the right hands. He did at times, but he just could not keep it up. And his corner was pleading with him. Hey champ, you gotta do this. I need to see something. I need you to throw more punches. I need you to keep your back off the ropes. He went out that next round. He couldn't do that. Corner mercifully throws in the towel. I don't think Colbert took that much damage that it was absolutely necessary for him to get stopped at that point, but his corner cares about him and saw that he was not firing on all cylinders and did the right thing and stopped it when he did. Yeah, that, 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 that's the thing, man. I mean, it's really, really interesting the way Salcido, you could see, you know, came back hungry after that defeat. It was really uh, impressive on his part to, to have been able to, you know, make those adjustments and really bring all that pressure that was necessary to, to eliminate Colbert uh, last night. You know, it, it, it's funny because you realize, uh, we realized going into last night's fights, they were kind of facing what had been each other's kryptonite. You know, Salcido was a the kryptonite, was the shiftiness of a guy like Colbert, and Colbert had been the, the pressure guy, uh, the, the way Valenzuela had pressured him uh, in, in the fight and put him against the ropes and stopped him. So we were going to see who was going to be able to make the adjustments. Felt like after just a couple of rounds of Boxing decent. It wasn't. He didn't box great, but he boxed decent. Colbert started going back and to the ropes more and more and more, and he sort of accepted that uh, that 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 sort of demise where you're going to go back to the ropes and and, and you're going to have a guy like Salcedo continue to work you. Um, and and for Salcedo, made the adjustment. But I'm wondering, you know, was Colbert shifty enough to really show us that Salcedo has gotten over the the mishaps of the past against shifty guys? You know, uh, certainly, uh, you know, working with a uh, uh, Jose Benavides Sr. can't hurt you, you know, uh, that, that's always one of the top trainers in the sport, and, and, and Salcido proved to be ready and, and pulled off the upset last night, which again is nothing new on Pro, on Pro Box TV. We, we, uh, we constantly talk about how we, we drive the odds makers crazy. There's always upsets on Pro Box TV, and last night was uh, no different in this fight. All right, let's talk about the co-main event there. He is quickly becoming one of the favorite fighters on Pro Box TV, the Mongolian. 
Senbatar Erdenabat getting a big victory over Franci Fortunato as he continues to climb the ranks at Super Featherweight. Pauly, what did you make of his performance in that co-main event? He's always impressive. Honestly, Erdenabat is impressive. And you can see he's got a really, really mature, experienced pedigree. You can see the word pedigree really comes to mind when, when you watch Erdenabat. Great balance, uh, great punch fundamentals, uh, solid uh, solid uh, choice of, of, of shots as well, shot selection, uh, very high IQ of a boxer. At times, it's almost like he seems to get bored. Um, there are moments where maybe if I have a criticism, it's that he, I'd like to see him stepping on the gas when he's got a guy you know, where he wants him. It's not like he doesn't have the experience to understand where, when it's time to step on the gas a little bit more. At times, he sort of looks like he's playing with his food a little bit too much, which, which could hurt you as, you as you raise the, the stakes and you go up the ladder. But this guy has been at a world-class level uh, as an amateur, uh, fought in two Olympic games, and you can see the pedigree there. Um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing him not only again, but also to seeing him with better and better competition. He's now, last night we saw him fight at a weight class that was more adept to him, and uh, he, he, looked, he looked terrific. Yeah, Chris, what do you make of Erdenabad's performance against Fortunato and his future at Super Featherweight? He's consistently one of my favorite guys to watch on our air. Uh, he comes out and performs and is, oh, time and time again, just very, very impressive. Only fights tough guys, by the way. Last night he fought a guy who was, who was uh, I think, what was it, 16-1 and one with... 11 KOs, a very, very high knockout percentage. And listen, Fortunato was, was super, super tough and was there to win from the opening bell to the end. I don't think he won a single round last night, but he was trying to win. And th th there's something to say for that. And Erdenbot has only been in with guys who are trying to beat him, trying to win. And he's, he's overperformed each and every time. Um, I agree with you, Champ. I, I, I wish he would put it all together in a way where, you know, he's got the power. He just doesn't get the stoppages because he's a, he allows these guys to live just long enough uh, that they believe they can stay competitive, they believe they can stay in the fight, they believe that they can still win, um, even, even when he's shutting them out. If he put some things together and made a few little tweaks, I think he stops all these guys because yeah. you, we, we hear it ringside. But we, if can, he, we can hear the way these punches land. We see the way that he's able to very, very adeptly make these guys miss just by a little bit. Counter punch, lets those hands go. He's got fantastic conditioning. Now he's at 130 pounds. He looks physically strong in there. Um, I, I do want to see him step up in terms of putting that stuff together. But regardless, he's extremely, extremely entertaining. And he's been in with tough competition consistently. So he, he's going to keep progressing. There's only his 11th pro fight. Um, but I, I still think there's things to work on. And uh, I'm, I'm curious to see what he can do with his world-class skills when he gets to a world-class level. All right, let's talk about Najee Lopez there. Light heavyweight, had no problems in taking care of Ismail Oakless. Pauly, what did you see about Najee Lopez's performance? What did you yeah, think? it wasn't a surprise here. Oakless had to come in on a few days' notice. So it was a re replacement opponent. The only impressive thing we can really talk about in this fight with Najee is that he was able to keep his focus and not really sleep on a guy like Oakless because he was a last-minute replacement, and it's also a, some steps down from the recent level of opposition that he's been fighting. So credit to Lopez, because sometimes as a pr young prospect, you start to read your own press clippings too much, and then all of a sudden you get, st you get lowered in the level of opposition, and you risk having a sort of a lackadaisical performance. Oakless didn't come to win last night. He came to sort of survive. So it's difficult to get a guy out of there who's kind of giving you those looks has the experience and is there to survive. But uh, no, Lopez, credit to Lopez for understanding how to get the finish, uh, going for it, uh, not getting overexcited where he's smothering his attack, you know, get, getting enough space on his shots to, and, and to select the right shots, especially those shots to the body, and, and taking the fight out of a guy who otherwise is pretty adept at going many rounds. Yeah, Chris, what did you make of Najee Lopez's performance against, against Oakless? Oakless is the kind of guy, one of those surviving journeymen, who as rounds go on, they make you look worse and worse. And not even so much because they do that much. It's just because they, they show that you can't finish a guy. That wasn't the case last night. Like you said, Champ, Lopez, he stayed dialed in. He stayed focused. He wasn't making mistakes. And now he's got a highlight real body shot knockout. Listen, left hooks to the liver, those always get replayed. People love watching a guy get hit, take a step back, delayed reaction, ugh, pain in the face, sitting on the stool. Those, those last. So it, 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 I think... Even though Najee took a big step down in competition, this was a last-minute fight, I think he's still impressed. I think he still moves forward, and this elevates him. You know, he's got, he's got another, another highlight. He fought a guy who's hard to stop and, and, and can be tricky at times, and he completely dominated, stayed dialed in the whole time. Didn't get hit with anything stupid, which he sometimes can when he gets really, really aggressive and trying to finish guys because he is a very offensive-minded fighter. 
Um, so all in all, I, I think that was actually a very good performance and a good night out for Najee Lopez. And, 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 and it's got to be said, when we mention the best light heavyweight prospects in the world right now, you think of Camille Cole, you think of Ben Whitaker. I think Najee Lopez is right there. deserves to be in that conversation Absolutely. as well. Especially when you realize how Whitaker probably took a few steps down uh, after having started very, very impressive. But in that, in that outing against Liam Cameron, he's drawn a lot of criticism for, the, for justified reasons. And there's some things to work on for Whitaker as well. So prospects, even at their best, and these guys guys are among the best prospects in the world and in this division or for me are the cream of the crop there's things always to work on but uh, last night Lopez showed why he's among those that level of prospects yeah between Salcido at the dinner bot and Lopez pro box TV alums continue to make a lot of noise in boxing we shall see which one of the three or if all three continue their rise up the ranks in the sweet science and of course all that news we will cover it here on top stories We'd like to remind you to scan the QR code, like, subscribe, and leave your comments here on our YouTube channel. This Saturday, big IBF super welterweight fight. The title shot between for Tim Zhu going up against Bakram Murtazaliev. You can see that on Amazon Prime Video this Saturday. And then four days later, Wednesday Night Fights continues. In association with Lou DiBella Promotions, we will have Mayo Yoshida going up against Sharetta Metcalf for the IBF bantamweight title. That should be big fun. Wednesday, Madison Square Garden, New York City on October 23rd on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. Wednesday Night Fights continues here on your boxing channel. I'm George DiMatellis, and that's Boxing Scene's Top Stories. Wednesday Night Fights, in partnership with DeBella Entertainment, it's Broadway Boxing, Heroes on the Hudson 2, with proceeds benefiting veterans of the U.S. Armed Forces. October 23rd. Don't miss Mio Yoshida as she defends her IBF Bantamweight World title in a rematch against Sharetta Metcalf. Live from the theater at Madison Square Garden, Wednesday Night Fights. Boxing superstar Tim Zhu is coming to Prime Video. Don't miss this championship showdown as Zhu takes on undefeated Murtaza Liao for the Super Welterweight World title. Saturday, October 19th, streaming live exclusively on Prime Video for all Prime members. For more Pro Box TV, scan the QR code on the screen or go to the App Store and Google Play. Pro Box TV, your boxing channel.